Welcome or welcome back on C Square. On this video clip, we're going to talk about, talk about quadratic function and transformation of this quadratic function. But first of all, let's take a look to uh, f of x equals x squared or y equals x squared. It's the same thing. Uh, the only difference f of x tells us is a function. And we're going to graph that using a table. And as you notice, I put five value in the table, uh, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. I will strongly advise you when you have a quadratic and you want to graph using a table, use also negative values. Um, and in this case, we have what? Negative two squared, that is negative two times negative two, that will be positive four. Negative one squared, that is negative one times negative one, that will be positive one. Zero squared, zero, one squared, one, two squared, four. So we have now here, uh, five points, which we can graph them on an x and y axis, and we should get something like this. This is the, let's say, famous, famous graph of f of x equals x squared. Um, if you notice, the graph is not a line, is a curve, is a parabola, how we call it. Uh, it's open up, how we call it. Uh, the, uh, there is something important about uh, all the parabola and this, this parabola also. This uh, this line in the middle of the parabola, it's called the axis of symmetry. This point is called the vertex, the vertex of this parabola. Um, or the minimum in this case, if it, that, that vertex is the lowest possible value for that, uh, this quadratics. And also uh, the domain, the domain or of any quadratics is any real number. Okay, or you can see this format. That's the same thing, any real number. The range, on the other hand, is any number greater or equal zero. You cannot get anything larger than, uh, less than zero. Okay, you'll see that on uh, the screen. Uh, the, the, I uh, highlighted with a black marker the possible values for the range. Um, for the next part of the exploration, we're going to use GeoGebra. Type in GeoGebra.org. We have a graphing calculator app there, which can be used. And you're going to get something like that. You notice here we have a keyboard to type in function. Or we like to type in. And I'm going to start by typing in f of x equals x squared. And I really don't use this keyboard. I just use the regular keyboard of the computer. And I'm just going to type x squared like this. I'm sorry, x. x squared like this and the uh, GeoGebra will give me the function f of x and that x squared. And we get the graph we just mentioned at the beginning of this video clip. Open up. This is called the pattern graph. Now I want you to type in g of x equals x squared minus 1. And do you see how we type it in? Or, uh, if you do not want to use the keyboard. Okay. You should get something like that. Pause this video clip and discuss about uh, important things about this uh, uh, quadratic. Oh, I put a couple things there. I mean, five things. Vertex, vertex of this blue uh, parabola, axis of symmetry, orientation, domain, and range. Yes, uh, the vertex is right here. The axis of symmetry is the same like uh, the previous one, just the vertex move one up. Uh, orientation is still up. Domain, any real number, and the range, the range change. Yes, now we cannot get numbers that are less than one 
uh, as an output. All the, all the outputs we can get out of this uh, g of x function are 1 or greater than 1. Now I would like you to think about and discuss if it's possible with you, your partners about how we can move this graph, the green one, right, the original one, uh, to 5 or 10 units. Write the equation. And also you may want to think about what I mentioned before, vertex axis of symmetry orientation domain and range. Pause this video clip, please. Okay, if you have this equation and you have this picture, you did a wonderful job. Yes, the first one is moving one up, the second one two up, third one five up, last one ten units up. Uh, and the axis of the symmetry is the same. The vertex is the one that changed, move one, two, five, or ten up. The domain is all real number and the range, that's it's different on every single equation here. The range, as I mentioned, y greater or equal 1, for example, here on this one, y greater or equals 5, and on the last one, y greater or equals 10. I said clear this equation, keep the original, the green one, if you remember, try to move the graph down, 1, 2, 5, and 10 units, write those equations. If you have this equation, you did a great job. This uh, uh, equation moved uh, f of x 1 unit, 2 units, 5 units, and 10 units down. And now let's take a look to some characteristic of these uh, uh, graphs. They all have the same axis of symmetry, which we mentioned before. that uh, y-axis x equals 0 the vertex of each one is moved 1 2 5 10 units down depends on the equation the domain all real number the range yeah for example here the range any number greater or equals negative 1 here any number greater or equals negative 5 or the last one any number greater or equals negative 10 Okay, now I would like you to move uh, the original graph, the green one, 1, 2, 5, and 10 units uh, left. Pause this video clip, write those two equations. If you have this equation, uh, there you go, you move uh, f of x1, 2, 5, 10 units left, and you see now the Vertex move also, 1 unit, 2 units, 5 units, 10 units left. And also the axis of symmetry in this case is not anymore the y-axis. It changed. For example, for, for this one we have x equals negative 5. For this one we're going to have x equals negative 10. For this one x equals negative 1. Okay. Um, they are still open up. And the vertices uh, are minimum minima of each function. Clear this, and now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna try to find the equation that move this original graph, the green one, the one we start with, one, two, five, and ten units to the right. Write those equations. If you have this equation, there you go, you uh, were able to move 1, 2, 5, 10 units right. Similar with the previous example, the vertices moved, each vertex moved. First one, 1 unit right, the second one, 2 units, 5 units, and then the last one, 2 units right. The axis of symmetry moved also. For example, for this one, the axis of symmetry is x equals 5, you see. I just do it. For this one will be x equals 10. Still open up. Still the, each vertex is nothing else than the minimum of that 
quadratic. So now we're going to do a combination of transformation. I'll try to think what equation will move the green uh, graph, the pattern graph. Two units left and four units up. Three units right and five units down. If you have this equation, then you did a wonderful job. Yes, they move, the first one is moving two units left, four up. The vertex is right here. The vertex will be negative two and positive four. The axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative two. Yeah, this guy. Uh, the domain is going to be any real number, and the range, be careful here, the range for this one will be any number greater or equals negative two. For the second one, yeah, for the second one we have what? The vertex will be 3 and negative 5, right? Right here. The axis of symmetry is x equals 3. And the range is any number greater or equals negative 5. And these vertices for both equations are the lowest possible values for this function. So they, they are... We call them minimum. Now let's talk about another uh, important transformation that we can do with f of x, which is deflecting over the x-axis. So it's going to be an upside-down parabola. We're going to flip it. This is the equation that will flip. We just put a negative in front of x squared. And what, what is the major thing here? Well, I mean, we can see in the graph the orientation is down. And also the range in this case. The range that any number. Okay, sorry. Any number that is less or equal to zero. So when it's the orientation change, uh, the, the range, um, also the inequality sign for the range, let me say like that, change becomes less or equal. The axis of symmetry is the same. The vertex, the same zero and zero. The domain, like I said, all real number. These are called rigid transformation. However, we have something that we call non-rigid transformation. And this is the first one. When the number in front is greater than 1, in this case is 2, it can be any other number, 3, 4, 5, uh, 1.5, uh, 10.5. Any number greater than 1 will make a, how I call the skinny parabola, vertical stretch. And vertex in this case the same like the x squared, 0 and 0, axis of symmetry is the same, orientation up, domain, any real number, and the range, any number greater or equal 0. And this one is the opposite of the previous one. This one, when the number in front of x squared is less than 1 by greater than 0, so it's a fraction or a decimal, we get a fat one, vertical compress. How we call it. And this information are the same like the previous one. And in this final part of the video clip, we have a summary. This is what we call the vertex form. The vertex, as you notice, is h and k, the axis of symmetry x equals h. The domain, as I mentioned, any real number. And the, be careful with the range. Uh, if the uh, parabola has a, a number in front that is greater than 0, y is greater or equals that k. And for a less than 0, the range is y less or equal k. So go ahead and try to sketch the graph of this one. And I think the first part is easy, right? It's going to move. Yes, one unit right and two units up. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that is the transformation. Uh, the axis of symmetry, by the way, is going to be this line. So uh, we can sketch just one side of the parabola, and um, the vertex we just plotted. Uh, this will be a maximum because this is negative three. The domain will be any real number, and the range, since that is less than uh, zero, the negative three, we're gonna have y less or equals negative two. And the graph is gonna be an upside down parabola. If you really wanna get the shape, just plug, uh, for example, zero, Okay, which is one unit left from the vertex and uh, two. And we can get two values, uh, which will be uh, zero minus one, it's negative one. Negative one squared is one times negative three is negative three plus two is negative one. This is the parabola we should get. And you see it also here. Uh, if you enjoyed this video clip, don't forget to click the like button and come back on C-square for more video clips. Thank you.